Welcome back. So, as I'm sure you've gathered from the title, I am going to talk about a situation that occurred within our YouTube thrifting community earlier this week. And I'm sure that some of you are thinking, oh, well, I bet Sue's close to the center track on this. She'll give us the straight dope. Well, before I end up stringing you along to set you up for disappointment, no, that's not what's going on here. Um, and I'm sure others of you are thinking, Sue's going to yell at people for being naughty. No. Nope. What I'm going to do is I'm going to offer a couple of constructive solutions. Uh, and it is literally a couple. It's just two. Two little rules that we, as YouTube content creators, can adopt that I believe will eliminate at least 90% of the contention within our community. So stick around. We'll talk about them when we get back. So I guess the first thing we need to address is why I am sticking my face in this. Uh, like, don't I have enough poo-poo in my life? I got to come in and stir this up and see if I can make it stink a little more. No, no. Unfortunately, this batch of poo-poo stinks plenty already. And second, I'm I'm not exactly on the sidelines. Unfortunately, it is crawling into my life. So, I feel the time has come when some reasonable and responsible solutions need to be thrown out so that we can try to de-escalate the bad feeling, put the drama behind us, and hopefully keep it from resurfacing in the future. So I guess the next thing is, why is that even important? Well, our thrift community, the content creators who are doing YouTube thrift shows, and the viewers, because very few of you are tuning in to one YouTube thrift show only. Most of you are subscribed to many different channels. You are our shared body of viewers. Uh, I, if there is anyone out there who watches me and only me, boy will I be surprised and, and worried. I'll definitely be worried. But you are our collective pool of viewers. And this sort of drama is not good for you. So how do I know that? Well, because I follow the comments. When I see dramatic videos, that's what we're going to have to call them, dramatic videos, instead of watching the video, because you know, I, I Watching things is not my best thing anyway. But instead of watching the videos, what I do is I'm running through the comments. I want to see, I, I just want to see what the viewers have to say. And I was seeing comments like, I, I love you both. I, I, I wish you could work this out. Things like, please just walk away from this. You know, let it go. Keep moving. You know, don't let this get you down. Just keep moving forward. Or the, the one that always gets me, and there were a few of these, that this is breaking my heart. This is our pool of viewers. This is what they are saying. 
This is the message they are delivering to us. We need to listen and pay attention. Now, I'm not going to say that there are not a few people who enjoy the drama, and I'm not judging them. Remember, we already talked about this. I, and ever since lockdown, have been unfortunately watching Harry and Meghan drama videos. But remember I told you I was starting to talk about them like they were my friends and neighbors? Well, that's something important to be considered about our viewers. We're on YouTube, and this is a one-way communication channel for the most part. You see me, but I don't see you. I have to remind myself that some of you have been having coffee with me two or three mornings a week for almost a year. I have very close relatives that I have spent less time with throughout the entire course of my life than you have spent with me in the last 11 months. Of course you think you know me. Uh, and I'm not saying you don't. I think for the most part you do because I, I, what you see is what you get. That's, you know. But why would you not feel that you have some legitimate stake in what's going on in my life and decisions I'm making and things I'm doing? It's normal. That's the way it works when you have friends. You see your friends do something dumb and you don't just sit back and say, oh, well, Sally's doing something dumb. She's going to fall down those stairs. No, of course not. So naturally, viewers are involved. And that's really got to stop. Because at the very best of times, it is inappropriate and selfish. I mean that selfish, that that's, I, mean, I know that's a strong word, and I am using it. It's inappropriate and selfish of us to throw our personal issues into people's lives. It's not good at the best of times. But right now, when people are in forced lockdown, in social isolation, when this has been going on, for four or six weeks when some of us have another four to six weeks to look forward to. People are on the ragged edge. We see this all the time. Those of you who follow the comments on my channel, I am just one of many, many, many channels, and I am far from the biggest channel out there, far from the channel with the most comments. You know what it's like. You are seeing people saying, well, I'm toughing it out. I'm trying, I'm, I'm not feeling so good, but you've got to know that this is not the time to be doing this sort of thing. This is so far from the time to be doing this sort of thing that the only way I can characterize this is selfishness. We have got to step back and remember that we are here for our viewers. Our viewers are not here as our Greek chorus. I and mean, you know, yes, of course you are our audience, but it's not your job to just mindlessly clap and say, oh, I love you, I love you. You need to be getting things from us. And those things need to be positive. They need not to be negative. They need to be building you up, not taking you down. So, Here's the thing. What we need to look at is implementing two rules for our channels. And I believe most of us have some version of both these two rules in place to begin with. The first rule is we need to just make up our minds that whatever issues we have with other YouTubers or, or perhaps our viewers or whatever, stay off YouTube. Deal with them privately in some other venue. You want to deal with it on Facebook, Instagram? 
that's easy for me to say because I, I'm not on Facebook and I'm not on Instagram. In fact, it took me like 20 minutes to sign into Instagram last week. I'm still not sure I did it right. And if I ever have to go back on Instagram, it'll take me another 10 minutes to sign myself in. But we need to keep it off YouTube. It needs to just move into another venue. And the reason for this is we need to treat our viewers with more consideration than to just use them as a dumping ground when we're not feeling up to par. That's not okay because there are people out there right now who are already in a very, very fragile emotional state and they are letting us know. I mean, they're letting me know in the comments and I do not believe I am the only person getting this feedback. Well, I know I'm not the only person getting this feedback. As I say, I've been monitoring comments on other channels too. The viewers are saying, please, we don't want this. My viewers beyond that, and as I say, I've actually I've been soliciting feedback from people who are feeling like they're on the ragged edge so that we can get some outreach going and get people to sort of tie up with them, pair off with them for communication. This is not the time to be doing that. So that's number one. Take it off YouTube. If you don't have something nice to say about your YouTube colleagues, say nothing. It's not that hard. It's not like I'm saying, oh, please lie and tell, tell everybody they're your best friend and, oh, we get along so well. No. Just don't say anything at all. It's even easier than, you know, than lying. It's even easier than telling the truth. You just remain silent. Just walk away from it because our viewers don't need to be caught up in this. They don't know what's going on. They're never going to get any more than one person's side of the story at a time. And it's always going to be he said, she said. Some of them are going to take sides or feel like they have to take sides, which is a terrible position to put anybody in. And in the end, it's always going to look bad for us as a community. And by us, I mean YouTube thrifters and resellers. It's always going to reflect badly on us. And that's one of the things that I learned when I first started making um, thrifting and reselling videos. And this goes back, it was uh, last May. I was contacted by a couple of more experienced YouTube thrifters, um, just people who very kindly gave me a couple of pointers. You know, I'm grateful to them. I was told that this is a very cliquey and cutthroat world. People, people get together in little groups and it's very exclusive. And if you are not in that group, you're isolated out and, you know, you're, you're just not on the right track and, and, you know, they'll stab you in the back. And I, I couldn't believe what I was hearing, frankly, because I personally knew very few resellers who were on YouTube and the very few I knew and, and still know are not like that at all. It was so hard for me to believe that. But that's the reputation we've gotten for ourselves, that we are cliquey, backstabbing, and cutthroat. I don't know about the rest of you, but that's not how I want to self-identify. When I look in the mirror, I do not want to see the person who is described as cliquey, backstabbing, cutthroat. The fact is that we can change that very easily. So here's the second rule. And this one actually does require a little work. We need to make sure that our video comments, that whole video comment section, is not becoming a haven for trolls and haters. 
If somebody leaves a negative comment about one of your colleagues, and remember, we are all your colleagues just as you are all our colleagues. That's, that's how this works. If somebody leaves a negative comment, remove it. You know, if this if it's somebody you know and you feel you can reach out to them and say, I think your comment will be hurtful, would you like to change it? Oh, by all means, I don't want anybody alienating their viewers. But we all know what hater comments and troll comments look like. And we all, as content creators, have our own little cadre of haters and trolls. And frankly, I will put mine up with anybody else's any day of the week. I was very recently called a self-important lunatic. Ha! Huh, top that. Furthermore, it was spelled correctly. Top that. In fact, my first hate comment came from over on um, Crazy Lamp Lady when I was doing videos on Jocelyn's side exclusively, and I, I haven't started my own channel. And someone had written in, it was a gentleman, um, and, and he, and he was, uh, Polite. That's not, the comment was unfavorable, but he wasn't rude and he wasn't abusive. And he said, I didn't tune in to watch some middle-aged woman going on about, and I don't know what I was going on about, because he really had me when he said middle-aged woman. And I was thinking, I am 65 years old, and this man thinks I am a middle-aged woman. I need to go find him and buy him a cup of coffee. That was my first, I, and I still remember that. You have to have a thick skin to put yourself out there on a venue like YouTube and do it consistently knowing that there are going to be people who are going to leave nasty comments or they're going to give your videos a thumbs down. A couple of weeks ago, somebody wrote in and said, I can't believe you have no thumbs down on this video. And I checked. And I couldn't believe it either. And I wrote right back and said, oh, wait a minute, you know, just give it time. Always. I, I don't have any videos that don't have at least half a dozen thumbs down. It's just the way it works. There are people who, it's like my theme music. There are people who say, I love that. It reminds me of the islands. I got it from the children's section on YouTube. Um, they have a royalty-free music selection. This is a kitty song. And then there are other people saying, I hate your music. Bottom line is you can't please everyone. You really can't. And when you are talking about thousands of people watching your videos, you're not going to get you know, 1,500, 2,000 people in some cases with some of the bigger uh, creators. Jocelyn has, oh God, I don't, I, huge numbers. Let me just say that we're in the hundreds of thousands. You don't get a couple hundred thousand people watching your video and no one saying, I don't like it. It's just the way it works. This is something that we have got to accept. We must be thick skinned about this. By the same token, when we are hosting our own channels, and we are in charge of those comments. We have got to be, we've got to be courteous to our colleagues. And if somebody comes on one of my videos, and, and I'm going to pick on Jeffrey because no one would ever say anything like this about Jeffrey, and says, I hate real nifty vintage because Jeffrey is just so nasty and he's got a big nose, or whatever. I'm going to remove that comment. I'm, it's going to go. Because, first of all, it's a personal attack, um, mostly the big nose thing, and I just threw that in so it would be a personal attack. It's a personal attack. It's not constructive. If somebody had written in and said, you know, I think Jeffrey's videos are a little long, I would probably remove that too. Because I think that comment needs to go to Jeffrey and not to my videos. It's just not the appropriate vehicle because what's supposed to happen? Am I supposed to, you know, text Jeffrey and say, Jeffrey, your videos are too long. It's not, it's, there's, it's not the appropriate format. So 
we need to be vigilant about our comments and not allow the trolls and haters to find a home on our videos. Um, it doesn't matter if you like the person that they are snarling about. You need to remove the comments. Because the fact is, if you don't remove the comments, the very least it says is that you condone this because you are condoning it. You are giving them a forum. And the very worst it says is that you are encouraging this. And that goes back to what I was saying before about our community having a reputation as being cliquey and backstabbing. So we need to do that. Now I know there are probably some comment or some content creators who are going to say I don't need anybody telling me how to run my 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 channel. And I'm not. This is just please can we be kind? Please can we follow the golden rule and do for our colleagues what we would like them to do for us. If somebody comes on my channel and, and bashes Jeffrey, I'm going to remove it. And you know what? If somebody goes on Jeffrey's channel and bashes me, he's going to remove it too. Because th th this is just bottom line. We try to be polite people. We try to be courteous. But again, it goes back as well to our pool of shared viewers. Why should they have to see that? Why should they have to put up with that? Our videos should be the relaxation for people. It should be the fun. It should be the escape. Right now, we really need to be working very hard to be the lifeline to be the voice of reason and sanity. And Lord knows that is what I'm trying to do with this video. We don't need to be fostering bad feelings. So whatever the source of the drama is, it needs to be removed from the setting of YouTube and taken off the backs of our viewers. The overwhelming majority of our viewers, and I can tell you right now, there are people who are scratching their heads saying, what is she talking about? What drama? There are others saying, oh yeah, I know the drama, but I think this one's right. I think that one's wrong. No, we're not even going there because that's not even what this is about. It's not about who's right, who's wrong, who's good, who's bad. It's about move it somewhere else. Because our viewers are not our freaking therapists. And even if they were, please not now. Everybody's got too much on their plates. And some of our viewers are really at serious risk. So please, as content creators, as responsible colleagues, can we not all agree, one, whatever it is, can we keep it off YouTube? Two, can we make sure our comments are not turning in to a haven for trolls and haters? Please. Now, I'm sure after a video like this, I'm definitely going to get my fair share of trolls and haters. That's okay. I have a thick enough skin to handle it. But the truth is, if I can stop even a little bit of this, this seeping angst that is moving out into our community right now, it's so worth it. All right, I've said what I need to say, and I would like to take up word origins and their romantic stories and give you a couple of interesting pieces just so we don't end on a bad note. Comedy. 
in the Greece of two millenniums ago, we call that millennia these days, and more ago, a Komos was a festival with music and dancing that lasted until after supper and ended with a torchlight parade. These drunken celebrations were devised by the Dorians, a sturdy Hellenic tribe noted for their body humor. A uh, Hellenic is Greek, by the way. Uh, the earlier rebels were characterized by absolute license and were also, um, as also were the early comedies. The chief singer at the party was the komoidos, or comedian, and from this Greek term we derive our word comedy. Um, circus. When you speak of the three ring circus, you are repeating yourself because the original Greek word kirkos meant a ring or circle. This entered Latin as circus and thus gave us the word for our great tent exhibitions. From circus, Latin developed another word, circulus, meaning a little circle. And this Latin term contributed to us our very modern publicity word, circular, that printed item that is designed to circulate among a number of people. Exposition place out. Every play in the theater starts with the exposition in which the author gives us the beginnings of his plot. And exposition is Latin expositus from ex out and pono place. That is the playwright has placed his story out in front of us so we may see what is going what, what is going to be about. Toward the end of the play we reach the climax. And the Greek word climax means ladder. In our play, then, we have reached the top rung of the ladder of excitement and suspense. The affairs of the characters are in a snarl, and everything is hopelessly tangled. Then comes the denouement, or the solution. And in French, denouement really means unraveling, which, with many changes of spelling, traces to the Latin dis, apart, and noto, not. So the play ends with the knots apart, its complications untied and unraveled. All right, have a great day, everybody, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Stay safe, stay safe. We'll see you.